So I usually do the trivia portion of the video somewhere in the middle. But this time I'm going to do the trivia part at the very beginning. That way I can look out for whatever they talk about on IMDb. I heard about this movie. Usually what they bring up is that George Lucas, in order to finance Star Wars, had to uh, make this movie first. And one other thing that um, someone else brought up, and that really trips me out, is that this movie was filmed in 1973. And they go back to 62 to show how different things were. Because back then, starting from the 1900s, every decade after that, each one has its own different look, music. I mean, everything is different compared to the decade after. So 1920, 1930, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Around the 2000s is when things start not not really changing much. Here they only go back 11 years. So now, 10 years ago, we would have to go back to 2014. It's not a huge difference. Culturally, it's not a big difference. So let's go ahead and check out some trivia from IMDb. And I'm going to start with the synopsis. On the last day of summer vacation in 1962, friends Kurt Richard Dreyfus, Steve Ronnie Howard. It says Ronnie Howard, not, not Ron Howard. I guess he used to call himself Ronnie Howard. Terry, Charles Martin Smith, and John Paul Lamatt cruise the streets of small town California while a mysterious disc jockey, Wolfman Jack, spins classic rock and roll tunes. That's another reason why I wanted to watch this movie because it takes place in the Bay Area. Somewhere in the Bay Area, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. I'm from Oakland, so wherever they're filming, I'm pretty sure I've been there because I've traveled all over the Bay Area. It's the last night before their grown-up lives begin, and Steve's high school sweetheart, a hot-to-trot blonde, a bratty adolescent, and a disappearing angel in the Thunderbird provide all the excitement they can handle. Yeah, it's just um, him going back to his uh, teenage years. Pure nostalgia. Due to the low budget, George Lucas was unable to pay all of the crew members. Uh, he offered to give many of them a screen credit and lieu of payment, and they accepted. Wow. Traditionally, only department heads receive screen credit. Giving screen credit to so many crew members has now become a tradition, which is why closing credits last so long now. So, so George Lucas started that. That's cool if he did. When Wolfman Jack makes an on-air prank call to Pinky's Pizza, the voice on the other end belongs to George Lucas. Ah. Wolfman Jack, who played himself in the movie. Yeah, I heard that guy was a real dude. He was a real disc jockey from back in the day. Was specifically chosen by George Lucas to play a role in the movie because Lucas remembered listening to him on the radio when Lucas was in high school. There you go. When Charles Martin Smith pulls up on the Vespa in the beginning. His crash into the building wasn't scripted. He genuinely lost control of the bike, and Lucas kept the camera rolling. Fortunately, the accident and the actor's reaction to it was in keeping with his character. Furthermore, the incident got the first big laugh from the audience in its first public premiere, which Lucas and friends took as a very good sign for the film. One of the main reasons why so many studios initially turned down the script was because George Lucas wanted at least 40 songs on the soundtrack, which would obviously lead to a large bill over the rights to these songs. Universal finally agreed to fund the picture when Lucas' friend, Francis Ford Coppola, that's why it says Lucasfilm and Com Flash Coppola, production, fresh from the success of The Godfather the year before, he came on board as a producer. Harrison Ford was asked to cut his hair for the film. He refused, stating that his role was too short and offered to wear a hat instead. That guy's always been like that, man. Just, just a hard ass. When John and Carol are sitting at the red light, a car full of girls pulls up next to them. One of the girls throws a water balloon through the window and it hits Carol. It was scripted to hit the side window and drench Philip's face who was then supposed to get really angry. 
However, she was accidentally hit square in the face and unable to refrain from laughing. Still, she kept going. Ad lived to the scene and George Lucas kept it, as he did with many presumably garbled first takes in this movie. Yeah, it, looks like, it looks like he's going like a uh, guerrilla filmmaking. Like really quick and let's just see what happens. About 300 pre-1962 cars were needed to create the cruising scenes. And over 1,000 classic owners who responded to the ads in local newspapers were interviewed. Harrison Ford initially turned down the film because he was offered 485 a week, less than, a, less than he earned as a carpenter and not enough to support his family. When the offer was up to 500, he accepted. <laughs> With his production budget of about 750,000. That's not a low budget, man. It would be for an action film, but this is not that. I don't know why it costs so much. And its, and it's eventual box office growth of over 150 million. Man, that's profit. This is among the most profitable movies ever made. Hell yeah. In gratitude for his performance, George Lucas gave Wolfman Jack a fraction of a percentage point of the net profit. This ended up being enough money to give the Wolfman a comfortable income for the rest of his life. Mel's driving was demolished after the movie was completed. But the owner's son, Steve, decided to reopen other Mel's restaurants in 1981 in a small small chain. There are three Los Angeles themed after the movie and three in San Francisco where Joe Lucas is known to eat occasionally. Wow, I didn't know that. I wonder which one the one they show in the TV show. Universal thought so little of the film, not knowing how to how to market it, and certain that it had no stars, it would flop. That it sat on the shelf for six months before the studio finally de- finally decided to release it. To their great surprise, it w- it became enormously successful at the box office. Ah, oh, those those suits, man, or those executives, they don't know what they're doing, especially right now. The Pharaohs talk about the mysterious DJ, the Wolfman, speculating that he was either broadcasting from an airplane or from a pirate radio station in Mexico. In fact, Wolfman Jack worked as a disc jockey from 1964 to 1966 for XERF in Ciudad Acuña, Mexico. At the time, it was a 250,000 watt radio station that was powerful enough to reach much of the United States. And it was known for interesting choices in music and disc jockeys with a lot of attitude. <laughs> it was considered a pirate radio station as it did not have to pay any FCC licensing fees and because it could get away without paying royalty. Its outlaw nature led to it being the focus of a popular song by ZZ Top. I heard it on the X. I gotta hear that song. Paul of my Harrison Ford and Bo Hopkins were often drunk between takes had <laughs> conducted climbing competitions to the top of the local Holiday Inn sign. Man, George Lucas missed his high school reunion because he was too busy shooting the film. Now, that's kind of ironic. Charles Martin Smith and Ron Howard were the only two real teenage principal actors of the film. Most of the remaining principal cast members were in their 20s with the exceptions of 12 year old Mackenzie Phillip, and Harrison Ford, who turned 30 filming. Filming was beset by a series of misfortunes and disasters. The day before filming was due to start, a key member of the crew was arrested for growing marijuana. Woohoo! Hell yeah. On the first night of shooting, it took so long to get the camera mounted onto the car that filming didn't get started until 2 a.m. Putting the crew half a night behind the schedule before they even started. Most of the outdoor footage was to be shot in San Rafael. There you go. That's definitely the Bay Area. I've been there many a time. After the first night of shooting, the city revoked. What? After the first night of shooting, the city revoked the crew's filming permit. What? Due to complaints from a bar owner that they're blocking off the main street was costing him business. Nerd. They could have filmed his business and brought him even more people. 
filming proceeded in San Rafael for three more nights, then moved to Petaluma. Yeah. I know where that's at, too. 20 miles away. On the second night of shooting, a fire in a nearby restaurant brought fire trucks into the area, then sirens, and then a resulting traffic jam preventing any filming. Man. Harrison Ford was arrested one night while in a bar fight and kicked out of his hotel room. He yeah, asked, when you're young, it was widely assumed that Ron Howard was cast as Richie Cunningham on Happy Days due to the success of this, of this movie. Ironically, the reverse is true. Ron shot the original pilot for Happy Days in 1972. When the pilot wasn't picked up, ABC aired the pilot as part of its anthology series Love American Style. George Lucas cast Howard based on that pilot. And American Graffiti's subsequent success inspired ABC to reconsider the series, adding a greaser character based on John Milner. The series debuted in January 1974. Yeah, I was wondering who was first, Happy Days or, or this movie. He's satisfied with the name American Graffiti. Producers Francis Ford Coppola and, and Ned Tannen suggested that George Lucas retitle it Another Slow Night in Modesto. Or Rock Around the Block. Although the story takes place in Modesto, California, George Lucas decided not to film there as he felt it had changed too much in recent years. I wonder what he thought changed too much. It took 28 days to, to film this movie. This movie was shot almost exclusively at night. It is the only Best Picture Oscar nominee that year not to win any Academy Award. All right, so let's go ahead and check it out. One, two, three o'clock, four hey, o'clock. Hey, Mill Driving, five, six, American o'clock, Graffiti. O'clock, o'clock, so they used this song first here before uh, Happy Day. Wolfman Jack. Oh, there you go. That's where he messed up. Now, one of the audience started laughing when they first saw it. Oh, but you know what? You got to give it to a Ron Howard. He didn't break character. He just stared at him like, no big deal. Somebody else would have been like, oh, come, maybe he's hurt. Uh, but no, he's like, he's okay. Let's keep going. Maybe uh, George Lucas wanna, might want to keep it. I got to see what, what he made that mistake. What happened? <laughs> I don't know. It, it was probably he was, maybe it was one of his first time riding a Vespa. I don't know. No, 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 no. Great. All of these guys may have big careers $2, after this. Isn't she I'll from uh, Laverne and Shirley? After all we went through to get accepted, we're finally getting out of this turkey town, and now you want to crawl back into your cell, town. right? Turkey <laughs> town. You've got to get I that need, I just need some time. Nice. Look at that car. Classic cars, man. Rail driving. There's not a lot of places like that left, man. That seeing other people while I'm away can't possibly hurt, you know? Oh. Uh, how'd you like to go to the drive-in movies with me? <laughs> You've got to be kidding. I have a new car. Hey. Oh. <laughs> All right. Let the cruising begin. <laughs> hey. Oh. Is that you in that beautiful car? <laughs> I don't believe it. Oh my god. Hey, sixties Paris Hilton. She spoke to me right through the window. I think she said I love you. <laughs> oh, that man. Means nothing to you people. Is it me or the audio kind of fluctuates a little bit? Sometimes they're speaking really low and then sometimes they're like really loud. Yeah, <laughs> he's so boss. Mother. <laughs> How old are you? I'm old enough. How old are you? I'm too old for you. <laughs> they left a the little girl with that guy. What you got in there, kid? More than you can handle. Don't do it. Oh, man.
the how I thought of the uh, a green light for him. Oh, oh my God! With those kind of cars, you could cause a lot of damage. Hopefully, he doesn't have a dent. A big one. For a second, I thought he was Pee Wee Herman. Five hundred and twenty-five to be the owner of this practically new vet. Now I'll tell you. Five hundred and twenty-five. Cherry bomb. <laughs> Cherry bomb. Oh, this guy! Don't don't interrupt him. Oh, that. Rock and roll has been going downhill ever since Buddy Holly died. Amen to that. And Richie Valley. Day the music died. I'm gonna tell him you tried to rape me. Oh, what? Hey. Oh my God. Can you try to rape me? Yeah, it was shit. Oh my <laughs> God. Come on, really. Come oh back. man, the families were crazy. Happy birthday, Miller. Found that under uh, CS over there. Yes, what's that stand for? Chicken shit. That's what it is. Oh, man. Huh. I wonder back then, how many of those tickets did you have to get in order for you to go to jail? This guy again. Oh, we got a rumble. I think. <laughs> He's about to kick him. Man, are you all right? Yeah, I'll die soon and it'll all be over, John. <laughs> His glasses. <laughs> hey, he really is the wolf man. <laughs> well, he's back. Paradise Road. Oh, ho. they're gonna do it. Oh, oh, and it flipped. Oh, my God. That classic car, man. Tell me your name. At least tell me your name. Goodbye, Kurt. Wait a minute. Wait a second. <laughs> You'll never get his answer. Little kiss on your ear. Is this how you used to board planes back in the 60s? Like outside right next yeah, to the airplane? You. That plane does not sound safe. Yo, Timmy, she's gonna be right next to him. That's her? No way. John Milner was killed by a drunk driver in December 1964. Man, it's a little afterwards. Terry Fields was reported missing in action near Enlock in December 1965. Man, Steve Bolander. Is an insurance agent in Modesto, California. It, why does it look like uh like they're victims of a plane crash? Kurt Henderson is writing is a writer living in Canada. Alright. I like it. Very fun. Very nostalgic, especially if you were around that time. During the early nineteen sixties. The one I can compare to the most is uh Greece. One of the big differences is that Greece is a musical. So they sing and they dance the music themselves. Whereas this one, they, they just, uh, it's, it's only in the background on the radio. But they both use music throughout the whole movie. And it's like part of the movie. It's a very important part of the movie. A little too long. It should have been an hour and a half movie. There are a few parts where it kind of drags, but not too much. I think they should have shortened it. It's funny. It's interesting. Get to travel back in time. I'm pretty sure everything in there is pretty accurate. So from 1 to 10, I'm going to give this movie here. A 7. It's rewatchable and I would recommend it. Especially if you're into oldies, doo-wop, or... Uh, Muscle cars, old school muscle cars. You definitely like it. All right, catch you on the next one.